Hey, quick question. How do I plot a book? Write down everything that happens in the story, then in the second draft, make it look like you knew what you were doing all along. Neil Gaiman. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. We are back with our redo series, and this is our first episode that we are redoing. And it comes from our very first episode that ever aired, Season 1, Episode 1, Plotting versus Pantsing. This was a very fun episode. At the time, I was very much a pantser that got nothing done. <laughs> and I was a wholesale plotter that did plotting in every aspect of my story. Since then, like we talked about last episode, we've both changed a little bit in regards to our approach to plotting and pantsing. So first off, let's define what a plotter and what a pantser is. I'm a plotter 98% of the time, and these people are also known as the architects, the people who build the structure and then flesh it out. These are the people who are doing outlines after you initially get past the what-if moment when discovering your own story. The next thing you think of is, how is it going to end? How am I going to get there? What's the structure and the recipe that'll make this story successful? That's the nice thing about all of you plotters out there. You know your structure before you start. It gives you a direction to go. If you have the discipline to stick with it to fill in that outline you created. For me, there's a lot of sushi involved, a lot of self-rewards, getting past certain hurdles in the story. A lot of that discipline also comes down to making sure that you exercise those muscles, that you're writing every day as much as possible. So who are some noted plotters out there in the world? It might completely shock and surprise you, but Brandon Sanderson is very noted for plotting his books out thoroughly. His books and his 10 book series and all of it. (laughs) Yeah, very much plotted. (laughs) A little more in my realm, John Grisham, and surprisingly enough, J.K. Rowling is a self-proclaimed plotter. I have my doubts. This is entirely based on her writing style, where I just have little question marks about she plotted this. You know, I, I could concede that she is probably a book plotter, like she plotted the book itself. But the idea that she plotted the entire series before writing the first couple of books doesn't quite match up. Like, there's a couple of things that kind of hint toward it, but they feel a little bit more like convenient uses of past things she just randomly threw in. And I think that leads into our next point pretty well. Advice for plotters is leave room for change. Allow yourself to have this concept, have this idea, but if something isn't working, it's okay to change it and morph it around in the middle. Take a little bit of advice from a pantser here. Edit according to the story you told, not the story that you thought you were going to tell when you started, because it will inevitably change in a lot of ways as you progress and develop through the story. Let it. Don't be so rigid that you absolutely have to stick to your outline. And the last bit of advice I have for plotters, don't take too long to get to the story part of the story. Because I had thought through this whole in-depth world and naming system and magic systems eventually, I thought that I needed to give all of this information up front. So I would used to hop back and give backstory immediately as I opened the book. Bad plan. Cut to the good part. It's okay if the reader doesn't know, so long as you know the structure that's underneath the story you're telling. We know I'm the plotter. And especially during that first episode, you were the pantser. What's a pantser? A pantser is also known as the gardener or the discovery writer. You put things in the ground and you take care of them and tend to them until they grow into something. Pantsers tend to be way more inspiration-fueled than plotters. We write when the inspiration strikes. We write whatever we're inspired to at the moment. We write whatever comes to our mind in the moment. You don't know everything that happens, so that actually makes it easier to tell the story. For true panzers, knowing everything that happens, there's no more point in telling the story. You know it. 
And part of being inspiration based as compared to discipline based is you tend to write in like frantic bursts where you don't sleep for three days straight and then you don't write for three months. I wrote 10,000 words last week and I've not written a single word this week. Yep, that checks out. (laughs) It's also a lot of the what if ideas. So we come up with a, oh, what if this could happen? And then we go write it to see if we can find that answer. But nobody in the real world, professionals, pants, right? They're all plotters? No, no, no. (laughs) Just like my favorite author is a plotter, your favorite author is a pantser. Ah. Lee Child is a noted pantser, as is Stephen King, Margaret Atwood, and George R.R. Martin. Those are all very acclaimed and notable pantsers. I totally get that with Martin, which might be why it takes him a decade to release a book every time. He seems a little bit of like a chaos gremlin in his writing. I would not be surprised. So do you have any advice for pantsers? If you know nothing else, you at least need to know the solution to the problem that is your plot. If you know that, then you can write towards it. It gives you a direction to go when there is no inspiration. The other bit of advice that I have is don't wait for inspiration. Inspiration is, I heard it described recently as an old well. And if you keep the water moving through the well, if you keep pulling from it, then it stays fresh. But if you leave it stagnant forever, the first bits of water that you're going to get out of it are going to be stagnant and gross and disgusting and not helpful at all to your story. So if you can keep writing, even if you aren't feeling inspired, then when you are inspired, that will be so much better. Another bit of advice I would have for pantsers is just because it's written down doesn't mean it's written in stone forever. It's not locked once it's on the page. So if you only have a vague concept of something, writing it down can actually help you flesh it out, help you think through the process because you're forced to put into words the concepts that have been rattling around. Are you telling me it's okay to plot every once in a while? Absolutely. I have to kind of agree. (laughs) Because writing is more complex than being a plotter or being a pantser. That is one of the biggest lessons I've learned in the last three years, is that there is such a thing called a planter. And I feel like instead of being this bicameral system where you're a plotter or a pantser, it's more of a spectrum. There are lots of places you can be in between the two. Planter is immediately halfway in the middle. You plot half of your stuff and you pants half of your stuff. If you attended our writing retreat, you probably also saw the alignment chart, which had chaotic pantsers and plotters and lawful plotters and pantsers, so different attributes for each one. So instead of being this or that, there's a nine-part grid that you can more accurately fall into. I think I said that I was the lawful planter. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So I kind of have an idea of where I'm going and may have written out like a vague outline, but I'm still a pantser in many ways. As compared to three years ago, I see you leaning on structure a lot more. Those recipes, the seven point plot structure, that kind of thing. You don't know what's happening as or in between, but you know these are the turning points in the story. Yeah. And that I found that that actually really helps me to write because one of my biggest struggles in everything I tried before I tried writing to a structure, I faltered around 20 to 30,000 words. As soon as I would hit that second act mark, I would absolutely falter because I know where I wanted to be in the third act, but I didn't know how to get there. I didn't have any major plot points to work towards. And so that sums up my planterness is when I plot, I plot the major points and then fill in the details as I go. And that leads into our next point, which is you can be a plotter in some regards, but a pantser in other regards. So if we look at the three pillars of story of plot, world building and character, you can be a plotter in the plot and world building, but a pantser when it comes to your characters. That's how I am. I am a plotter when it comes to the world building and a planter when it comes to the characters and the plot. I am very rarely a full panzer anymore. That means that there's no right or wrong way to tell a story. George R.R. Martin doesn't get to tell J.K. Rowling you're doing it wrong. 
They're on two separate sides. They have two different paths that they've gone down that works for them. So I would encourage you, our listener, to discover which one you are. Because there's no right answer. There's no one way that works for everyone. You need to discover which one you are. So try both. Try all three. Be a plotter, be a pantser, be a planter, and find where you fit in that spectrum. Because I, yeah, I'm a planter, but I still lean towards being a pantser than a plotter. One of the favorite books that I've written, I actually wrote during my experiment to see what it was like to be a pantser. Didn't end well, but it was a cool book story concept. This is especially useful to know about which is which. If you're kind of in a writer's block, you aren't quite sure how to proceed or you know how and you can't quite do it right, try wearing the other hat to get through just this scene. Because sometimes being a plotter or being a pantser is working against you. Absolutely don't get locked in because you think it's part of your identity. If I had gotten locked in to being a pantser because that's the stance I took on our very first episode, I never would have published two books. I had to embrace some level of plotting in order to make it through the books. Now, when we first did this episode three years ago, we hadn't come up with our tagline, our motto. If you've listened for any length of time, you know how we finish every single episode. Episode one of season one is the only episode that we didn't finish this way. So listeners, if you're in your car, if you're just listening with your headphones in, Startle your dog by saying this with me. Right Right selfishly. selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 